Welcome to Divorce Talk, a podcast for people who are contemplating divorce, going through one, or would like to know everything about the divorce process. Each episode, you'll hear from Chicago divorce lawyers from Beerman LLP, one of the largest divorce and family law firms in the state of Illinois, speak on all things divorce, from child custody, divorce litigation, mediation, the collaborative process, and everything in between. Now, here are your hosts, the Beerman Divorce Lawyers. I'm Sandra Napoli Diargo. Today I'm here with Heather Locus, wealth manager and leader of the National Divorce Group at BDF, and Beth McCormick, divorce and family law partner here at Beerman. Today we're going to be speaking about whether or not your divorce is a negotiated divorce or a litigated one. There may be a time when you need to bring in a professional. So. Uh, other professionals other than the ones you're working with. So today, Beth and Heather will speak about how, when, and you know whether you need to bring in a professional. Heather, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started? Sure. Our wealth management firm manages about $4 billion of assets for individuals and families nationwide. And as leader of our divorce practice group, we help divorcing men and women with three key areas. First is finding the right fit attorney and other professionals. Second, when they get further along in the case, uh, we have a subtle smart analysis, which helps them decide with their attorney's recommendation uh, whether they should settle then or continue in negotiations and to have confidence in that. And then ongoing, we're the professional that's with them post-divorce to implement their marital settlement agreement and everything they've worked so hard with their attorney to get. And I'm Beth McCormick, divorce and family law partner here at Beerman. I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Heather many, many times on um, negotiated settlements. Um, I have, I think, worked with you a few times even in litigation in the context of um, Settling Smart. Uh, that That's a great program that we use frequently with clients. I think today we kind of want to talk about when we bring that in and how strategic we are in doing that. Okay. So. Um, Heather and I, uh, either one of us have been the point of entry for people in the past, right? So it may be that I'll start with when the client comes through me, and maybe you can explain when they go through you. So initially, um, I might meet with a client, and often number one concern or is um, how much am I going to receive in asset allocation and what stream of income will I receive, if any. So that's asset allocation and maintenance and or child support. Those are the two things we're solving for legally, among many others, but primarily on the financial side, that's what we're looking at. Again, staying pretty big picture. In trying to determine what those numbers look like, either in litigation, what we're advocating for, or a negotiated settlement, as a lawyer, I have a general idea of how money works, and I have a good idea of um, what the court may determine as equitable distribution, but I'm not a tax expert. I'm certainly not an, uh, an expert on how the value of money grows, et cetera, so I bring in Heather, who will look at a balance sheet with me at the right time and ha be another thought partner with me and the client to say, which account might make the most sense. She and her team will be very thoughtful on everything from a cost basis all the way to the emotion behind why this account over that account. So we'll pretend the distribution of assets is 50-50. That she helps us determine what 50-50 might look like because there's many ways to carve out that outcome. Um, she may say, um, be more thoughtful on, gosh, the stream of income might be a little iffy. Might you consider taking more than 50% of the assets? That may be um, something that Heather comes up with, or I might say, Heather, we're thinking about looking for a lot more on assets, but not as much on the stream of income because there's some concern that way. Heather might um, run those scenarios and help us see what that outcome looks like. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's a great summary. <laughs> I feel like one thing we um, should say at the outset, if there's a gender um, statement that we make, it's not meant that we only represent one spouse or the other. Both of us are used to working with everything from the primary breadwinner, men, women, whatever that may look like. Um, I know, Heather, you have a women's services team that you 
you've built and take great pride in. And I think maybe if you could spend a little time helping our audience know what that is, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, great. Uh, for our divorce practice group, again, we help divorcing men and women, as Beth said, whether it's the breadwinner or the spouse that's never been involved in the finances. I also lead our women's service team, which is really important post-divorce because women tend to live longer, so their planning needs are you know, more robust. Um, they also tend to help parents and kids and grandkids more, so that means more assets they need, but they often do have fewer years in the workforce. Um, we help them with Social Security, which is often less, so the combination of all of those pieces make the planning even more critical for women than it tends to be for men. And in divorced households, we find the complexity of dealing with adult children, especially with high net worth families that we all deal with, because um, they're usually going to still help their 20-year-olds, sometimes their 30-year-olds as well, but that the details of that often aren't negotiated in the settlement. Right. Um, big picture for college and those bigger picture expenses will be. So a lot of what we do is help with post-divorce. How do you reconcile that with your spouse? How do you get a solution that's good for the family? And when you you know, when you can't work things out on things that were negotiated, then when is the right time to go back to your attorney? Well, what comes first? Is it the chicken or the egg? Right? right? That's a great so question. Do people come to you first when they're on the brinks of divorce? Or walk me through that process, because I'm sure a lot of people are confused. We have a wealth manager that we work with. I never thought of working with that wealth manager on planning for divorce. Hopefully, you know, never, but I, I just, right. the, you know, how you work together and what yeah. does come first? Great question. So it depends on the case. So we do, I've had our divorce practice group for about eight years now. We've had our women's service team for 15 years. Part of that was out of me unexpectedly getting divorced eight years ago. And through that process, I really realized that we could help divorcing families, both men and women, much more than we were through the women's service team. Um, I wrote a book a couple of years ago. I write for Forbes on divorce. So because of all that and because we help over a 1,000 families nationwide, our clients know that if their children, their friend, whoever, or themselves are getting divorced, they often do come to us first. And so we help them get organized. We streamline the finances. We give them the right fit attorneys. And we love firms like Beerman who are very proactive on alternative dispute resolution, ADR, with mediation and collaborative when that's the right fit. And if they need to be, you know, are really tough litigators and will navigate the process the way that has to be in the legal system. And so we are strong advocates of people having choices and getting educated. So we will recommend the attorneys and often there's other professionals that involved. Having said that, we very much get involved either from referrals from Beth or other attorneys, as well as clients who find out their friends, family, colleagues, partners are getting divorced and then need the sophistication on the tax side, the finances, especially now with the change in alimony slash maintenance laws where that's not deductible by the payer or taxable to the recipient. There's more strategic things that we can do in the right situation for splitting assets to save both the payer and the pay, payee, both spouses, on taxes by looking at should we give more on one retirement account? Are there charitable remainder trusts or other legacy estate planning issues that were set up as a family that now we could be thoughtful and save the whole family on taxes? Yeah, that holistic approach is super important. Um, the point of entry could be Heather or it might be me, as I stated at the beginning. But when I'm meeting with that person for the first time, I'm definitely not uh, applying a one-size-fits-all approach. I'm hearing the client. Um, I know that's a strong, one of your strengths as well. Actually listening to the clients as much as people say it all the time, I feel like listening usually then drives my advice. So um, th I'm not just sitting there and nodding my head, letting them know I've heard them. They will leave with a plan, and that plan first is which process do you think makes the most sense for you? In my head, as I'm hearing the clients, I have an idea, but ultimately the client decides. At the end of the day, no one really wants to litigate, but sometimes it's the only option. As I'm hearing all of their story, let's pretend they choose to do a form of alternative dispute resolution. We're going to call it ADR today. In that process, they have power, whereas in litigation, you're giving up some of your power to the court. 
as is your spouse, which is the best way to keep people in ADR. Having said that, when you have control, in order to use, use that control, you need trusted advisors, and one being the financial wealth manager. Heather, um, your story to tell, but maybe you could talk about how you, your point of entry was through a different professional, a divorce coach, and how that coach is used, believe it or not, in all three processes utilized completely differently, which is a whole other podcast. But I think the divorce coach is another trusted advisor we both depend on often. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, I was divorced eight years ago unexpectedly and really realized at that time that I didn't know many divorce attorneys, but I had met a divorce coach through some networking, and so she and she had helped other clients. We're fortunate our existing clients have a very low divorce rate. Um, and so uh, reached out to her because she had done such a good job with our clients. And they started, my kids at the time were very young, five and seven, they helped us with the parenting and then with the finances and recommended a team. And so through that process, my former spouse and I were able to interview um, multiple attorneys and find the right fit, and it was Beth and Beerman um, for us. And the coach just can help, even though it's an additional professional you're paying for, it can help reduce costs overall because it keeps the process moving and helps you from getting um, kind of hung up on an emotional issue or a trigger that you may have had in the marriage. And, you know, I feel very strongly that people want to be educated because the right fit for that family is the right fit that's going to get them through the process overall with the least amount of cost, complexity, and collateral damage, really, their life damage, their time, the relationships in the family. And for us, that was collaborative and alternative dispute resolution, but that's not always the case. As a professional, one of the toughest cases I've seen is somebody that we didn't get involved with until a couple years into the case, and they started out with mediation, and it didn't work out. And then they ended up going to a full-blown trial. So it ended up being four years and a lot of costs. And had they seen the right professionals up front, they might have been able to assess that maybe mediation wasn't the right fit for that family. And unfortunately, if you have to litigate, you're often better just starting that way than starting in another one and you know, kind of going through all the goodwill you might have as spouses working on it and just the time and money that that took to start and then still go through the whole litigation. So it's not one is better than the other. It's the right fit for the family. And that's where the coach comes in no matter which process. So in that example I'll take that Heather just gave, the coach might have that person, let's pretend they were in mediation, but they had a coach. That coach, very important distinction, a coach is a mental health professional stepping out of their role as a therapist. They are not looking back and figuring out, how did we get here? Um, One of our colleagues, another divorce attorney, gave the best eloquent difference between a therapist and a coach. A therapist is going to unpack and repack all your luggage for the trip and do that several times with you and for you until you really know whether you're going on the trip. A coach is going to grab your bag, as it is, and walk with you through the airport and get you on the plane and off on your way, the runway. Beautiful analogy. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the coach cares, so they're trained as a mental health professional. But ultimately, it's all about forward momentum, and let's not pack and repack those clothes, because that's therapy. Another um, issue that I often, I insist that my clients have therapy, because that needs to be done as well. The coach needs to just keep everybody going. In the mediation example, that coach could have been working with a person, very important, at a much lower hourly rate than a lawyer working on all the emotion. Do I really want or need this fight? We'll pretend it's a Saturday night that they're hung up on. Who gets the kids on Saturday night? Again, pretend. What really do you want? Is it about Saturday night or is it about more time? as that coach works on that emotional issue, that's not legal. That It could be legally, and again, in litigation, even in mediation, lawyers can do that, but at a much higher hourly rate, and we're not trained and as equipped as a mental health person to really figure out what that's about. Pause, back to the money side, and how we would use a trusted advisor i.e. Heather, to run the analysis on the financial side. How many times do we have 
clients who are insisting upon keeping the house as an example. We spend hours, sometimes days, on this topic. What do we do to help them get unstuck? So when we run the analysis, it shows them, you know, what if you hold it long term? What if you change it? But a lot of it is the conversation, asking the questions. What does the house mean for you? What does that look for stability for the kids, for the community? You know, one of the cases that we worked on many years ago, the wife we were working with, it was very, very important to her to keep the house. And that was a real sticking point through the process. And... Beth and Bierman did a great job of negotiating keeping the house and getting the spouse to share in some of those costs so that was the best solution for the family so the the teenagers could stay there and then a few years into it uh, kind of unexpectedly the wife decided she didn't want to stay there but because she had pushed so hard for it and it gotten such a nice settlement in terms of having the spouse pay for it there were certain parameters written in the agreement for the cost sharing of that for the tax deductions which all changed when the property then was sold. And so that was an example of where we were working with the client ongoing, managing the investments, the cash flow, the taxes, all of those pieces. But there we were able to talk about it and then had to come back, you know, and get the legal representation to go back and renegotiate the document and write a new document so that it met not only legal requirements, but also tax requirements for the tax deductions for changing the house. And the best example I give for why I insist on having a financial advisor in every one of my cases, I met with a woman after the divorce. We did not represent her during the divorce. No one talked to her about what it meant to carry the costs of the home. Mm. The lawyer did a great job, negotiated, got her the home, got her a really nice financial settlement with a stream of income that most of us would dream of. It wasn't enough. As an example, in this one, the woman had a home on the lake. No one really talked about what real estate taxes look like. No one talked about what maintenance looks like. She, Everyone heard the need that it was very expensive, but no one really looked through the emotion. And okay, now you don't have any spending money because you're house poor, as we all know the term. Had an, The lawyer did a phenomenal job, arguably, but had they had a thought partner with a wealth advisor, then it would have been a full, much more full and rich conversation with a decision that actually served the client well. And again, when we do our Settle Smart analysis, we do the projections and show, well, what does this look like? How is the money allocated in different ways? And what does this mean? Do you have money at 93 if you need it? And is it just barely getting by? Or do you have money for your kids or charity or whatever is important to you? So people can make thoughtful decisions on what the impact is long term. We always do those, though, in context of what the attorney is telling us is possible in their case, because there obviously is the guidelines from whatever state they're in, the, what's possible in their case, giving the assets. So wealth managers have to be really thoughtful and not set unrealistic expectations of what somebody wants or what might be possible. It's given the facts of your case, where could we end up and running those numbers and helping them understand. That's super important. Uh, all too often you'll hear a lawyer be critical of, well, this is great. I'm getting her a really good deal. Her, again, we'll say. Um, the wealth advisor looks at it and starts running the analysis and saying, wait, you're going to run out of money. Well, now there's fear set in the client's brain, and at, then the lawyer has to try to clean that up, so to speak. So it's important that there be a release sign so that everybody can communicate and, again, use this holistic approach. And can you use the holistic approach no matter what type, whether it's litigated, collaborative, you can, you should, you must. Okay. So collaborative by its nature is already holistic. An important distinction we should probably talk about is the difference between you and a financial neutral in that process. You want to explain that? Yeah, so in a true collaborative process, you're going to have a financial neutral, which is truly representing both spouses. And there's lots of benefits of that. They're looking at the family as a whole, and they're trying to come up with a solution. While we do that as well, we are typically in more of an advocate for one party when, when one spouse is coming to us as a new client during the process. And there's benefits to that because what we hear and when we get brought in during a collaborative process, even though we won't do the kind of hourly financial neutral work, it's because one spouse doesn't understand as much as the finances and they need someone to more explain it to them and take their perspective and run these projections just for them, not necessarily neutral for both sides. The other difference I see because we do work with financial neutrals on cases is because 
they tend to work on specific cases, and a lot of them might be CPAs and do taxes and stuff, but they don't manage investments long term. They don't have as good as understanding as what are families like this does it cost to live in, on the North Shore, downtown, more expensive suburbs, you know, in Chicago or LA, New York, wherever it is. And the reason is that's important is because of so few families live on half of what they have that almost every family, no matter how many zeros they have, are going to have to make some adjustments. And what I see is as a wealth manager with over 20 years of experience, I can help them better navigate, well, this is practical to potentially change versus this, versus when I go through the numbers with the financial neutral, it's easy to change numbers, but it's not always practical that they could actually live that. So it's a distinction as well, based upon the experience of the neutral and the wealth manager. You know, I think one of the things that's so important when you're hiring the right team is you definitely need the legal expertise. You need some emotional support, whether that's a therapist, a divorce coach, you probably, you're also getting it from your friends and family, but you want to use caution there. On the tax and financial expertise, you know, a lot of the attorneys are very sophisticated on the taxes. They have a lot of experience on employee benefit plans, buy sells, all of those business issues, particularly here at Beerman, on what that looks like. You have to get that, but it doesn't mean you have to have a different person for each area. It's hiring the wealth manager, the attorney, it, depending on your relationship with the CPA, financial neutral, so that all of the areas are getting put together overall. Just to clarify, what, what would be the difference between what a CPA might do for a client and what you might do for a client? So most CPAs are going to be able to say, okay, well, you know, there's a loss carry forward maybe that the family has on the tax return. How are we going to split that? Depending on their expertise, they may or may not look at existing gains on holdings and how they're separating stocks or bonds or mutual funds. A few of them will do projections. Most of them won't. Some of them might be in, more involved in a marital balance sheet again and separating. Um, so it, it just depends. The CPA is definitely going to be able to look at the tax return and advise the family though. How do you deal with some of these ongoing tax issues that are going to transfer from a joint return to two individual returns? Um, we don't prepare tax returns but I am a CPA so I can help with that process as well. Not all wealth managers can and some CPAs manage investments now so they could do a lot of the pieces that we do. Yeah, I <clears throat> again, Heather and I are super creative on team formation. I can think of a couple instances where we have in our head who the right accountant would be, and um, it's often the same person because, though, again, another trusted advisor who thinks like us, this very holistic approach, so that the client knows that they're safe legally, financially, and emotionally. A divorce is... Uh, you know, whatever uh, percentage you assign to it, it's highly emotional. Um, financial is really the end of the game, right? What, what do they really care about? They want to know that they're safe and that they're going to have enough money going forward. Legally, what we're doing is narrowing all the options to, so that it falls within the law. So good lawyers are not insisting that it be just within the law, let's get creative. We've been creative time and again. Remember in ADR, you can be creative. In court, you have to follow the law. And the judge can't, won't, should not be creative. The court has to follow the law. So if the people are fighting over the home, the home gets sold. Next, if the people are fighting over this account, 50-50. Well, wait, the tax implications of that. Well, too bad. Next. So you get the importance of trying to encourage people on ADR. Again, here at Beerman, not only are we not afraid of court, that's where we sometimes or more often than not end up. But remember, in court, 95 plus percent of cases settle eventually because of the threat of that not so thoughtful approach. Come on, we both are committed to giving some thought. Well, why not do that early on rather than standing on the courthouse steps and suddenly the sky is falling, we gotta get creative. Well, without that full team approach from day one, you're working from behind. So that's why early on, both of us want to get that team in early on. Well, I think anyone would be very fortunate to have either of you, and or even better, both of you on their team. So, um, thank you. Is there any anything any final thoughts you'd like to share with anyone who might be listening or or watching um, 
about, you know, just some last final words. I think it's important to reach out to people who've been through a divorce. Um, in addition to any professional who touches the divorce space because we've all built our reputations and we feel confident in our individual reputations. Talk to people, find out who who's thinking holistically, who's on the cutting edge, who's doing some of this outside the box thinking wherever you are and um, go meet with them. I think the other thing is it's important to interview like in in any uh, process, you want to hire the brightest and best, but you need to interview more than one to make sure that that's who you want to actually work with. It's a very intimate relationship, and if you don't feel that connection, you should seek it out elsewhere. The last thing I would say is it's well worth spending the money for a good professional team. I hear a lot, you know, my friend said, my mom said, my coworker who got divorced said this, and they're well-meaning and trying to help, I'm sure. But the law is so specific, and each family's issues and assets are so specific, and the law has changed so much for both child support and maintenance and the tax law with property splits that it's really, really important and worth the investment up front. It'll pay off long term for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's like anything. Spend the money up front, and it'll save you a lot. Get it done right. That's right. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, please subscribe to Beerman's podcast channel and like us on Facebook and LinkedIn. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Divorce Talk. Visit our website at www.beermanlaw.com where you can subscribe to the show so you'll never have to miss a single one. Please also follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating. Be sure to tune in next time for another enlightening episode. Please note, Balasa Dinverno Faults LLC BDF does not serve as an attorney, accountant, or insurance agent. BDF does not prepare estate planning documents or tax returns, nor does it sell insurance products. Please see important disclosure information in the notes of this podcast. BDF's current written disclosure statement discussing advisory services and fees is available for review at www.bdfllc.com or by request.